The Balkans are definitely one of the most politically explosive regions of Europe, and proof that the rise and fall of nations is far more complicated than most give credit for. The Balkans are quite the anomaly in Europe today, as on one side you have Romanians whose language and culture can be linked to ancient Roman colonists who were the last to survive east of Italy, along with the Hungarians whose language comes from a group of ancient Uralic migrants, while on the other corner of the peninsula there are the Greeks, who of course need no introduction, along with Albanians and Turks. And sandwiched right in the middle there are a multitude of Slavic republics, but whatever you do, don't call them Russians. Never call them Russians. Instead, these Slavs belong to a unique subgroup that's been in the making for over a thousand years. Although, as always, there are such a multitude of historical and political nuances that have shaped each individual country, it's very difficult to accurately tell a comprehensive narrative of the region without starting a third Balkan war. Despite having many cultural, genetic, and linguistic similarities, the Balkan Slavic region is one of the most politically fragmented areas of the entire world, divided between seven-ish countries, but despite having a very volatile political climate, these nations have some very interesting histories tied to many other regions of Europe and beyond. Nearly everyone has heard of Yugoslavia, but there were many other groups to significantly impact the area throughout the millennia, and the fallout from these periods of conquest has left such an imprint on the mindsets of these new countries that it indirectly tore the region apart, a process which actually has its own name, Balkanization. In fact, even today, many Croats and Serbs will actually pretend not to understand each other despite speaking two very similar dialects of what is essentially the same language. So what's the story behind this rambunctious group of brothers who never can seem to get along? The genesis of the South Slavs actually begins over a thousand years ago, but before the migration from the core of the Slavic homeland, there were many other Indo-European groups living in this region, including the Thracians in the southeast, Illyrians on the western coast, who may or may not have evolved into the modern-day Albanians, but that line of thinking is more popular in the nation of Albania rather than in the Slavic nations, many of whom also sort of think of themselves as the successors of the Illyrians. But definitely two of the biggest players in the Balkans 2,000 years ago were the Latin and Greek peoples, as the Roman province of Dalmatia, located in the eastern Balkans, was one of the most heavily Latinized areas in the Roman Empire. Around the 6th century AD, during the migration period of Europe when Germanic tribes and others were moving around the continent, another group of quote-unquote barbarians that entered the Roman Empire came from the Slavic homeland in modern Ukraine. These Slavs, along with the Goths, settled in the European half of the Byzantine Empire, and in only a couple short centuries, the formerly Latin-speaking province of Dalmatia had been replaced by Slavic peoples, or at least assimilated into the new Slavic culture, although a very small subsection of the Dalmatians survived and live on today as the Istriots, located in the Istrian Peninsula in modern Croatia. Now, here's where things get confusing. During this migration period, after the establishment of the Slavs in the Balkans, another non-Indo-European group also came to the Balkans, known as the Bulgars. Now, interestingly, the Bulgars were actually a Turkic people group from the steppes of Eurasia, not too far from where the ancient Magyars also hailed from, and these Bulgars established the Bulgarian Empire, which was naturally centered around modern Bulgaria in the Southeast Balkans. But this, of course, is not to be confused with the modern-day Bulgarian language, which was actually around during the time of the First Bulgarian Empire. The Bulgars took over much of the Byzantines' European territory, and are also the reason that Hungary is, well, Hungary, as they were the ones who forced the Magyars further west into Pannonia. Even though the Turkic Bulgars were responsible for the creation of the Bulgarian Empire, this was an interesting case where the native population previously living there was not assimilated into the dominant culture, and the Bulgar language gradually fell out of favor in the Balkans, and the ethnic Bulgars were lost to history. And similar to the original Magyars in Hungary, the genetic impact of these early Eurasian migrants on the modern population of Bulgaria is minimal, even if the name of Bulgaria clearly derives from the old Bulgar nation. 
The Bulgars were Turkic, but weren't actually Turkish Turks. As originating in northern Eurasia, their culture and gene pool were obviously very different from the Turks of Anatolia, and although the Bulgar language went extinct sometime around the 10th century AD, the last descendant of the Bulgar language is actually Chuvash in Russia, and the Chuvash people most likely displayed the phenotype of the ancient Bulgar people who conquered much of the Balkans. Although the Bulgars and Slavic Bulgarians were originally paganistic, the adoption of Orthodox Christianity in the 9th century was extremely important because if this event had never occurred it's possible Christianity would have never spread to Eastern Europe or at the very least the Orthodox Christian world would be far different than it is today. The Byzantine Empire defeated the Bulgars and briefly reclaimed the lost Balkan territory before a second Bulgarian Empire was established by actual Slavic Bulgarians this time, and this was one of the catalysts for the demise of the Byzantines and rise of the Ottoman Turks across the Bosphorus. In the 15th century, the Ottoman Empire defeated and dissolved the last of the Byzantines along with the Bulgarian and Serbian empires, sweeping through most of the Balkans and subjugating the Balkan Slavs for several hundred years along with the Albanians, Greeks, and briefly the Romanians and Hungarians, although Croatia and Slovenia were able to successfully repel the Ottoman advances. During this time period, many interesting things happened demographically in the Balkans. Large numbers of ethnic Turks from Anatolia settled in the region, many regional identities began to form among the Slavic peoples, and many of the native Balkan peoples opted to turn to Islam in order to gain favor in the new Ottoman society, which was especially common in Albania, but smaller numbers of South Slavs also converted to Islam, segregating themselves into the various ethnic groups we see today. And this is essentially one of the biggest factors in the ethnic identity of these South Slavic peoples, with Croatians and Slovenians mostly adhering to Roman Catholicism, while groups such as the Bosniaks and Gorani are Islamic Slavs in the West Balkans, while the Torbesh and Pomaks are Islamic Slavs in the East, and all other ethnicities including the Bulgarians, Macedonians, Serbs, and Montenegrins are a part of the Orthodox Christian world. As mentioned in the beginning, the Croatian, Serbian, Bosniak, and Montenegrin languages are all mutually intelligible, being a part of the wider Serbo-Croatian language, with the main difference being Croatian is written in the Latin alphabet, while all others use Cyrillic. But they also have slightly different standard forms and are considered separate languages only for political reasons, which brings us to the Yugoslav experiment with the kingdom and later Republic of Yugoslavia formed in the 20th centuries out of the ashes of the former Ottoman Slavic republics, excluding Bulgaria. Considering their cultural and linguistic similarities, one would assume that this Balkic Slavic nation would have been a united powerhouse, and for a time it was. However, following the fall of the Iron Curtain, Yugoslavia saw a split like no other, being plagued by countless civil wars and cases of non-stop violent and ethnic cleansing, with one of the only post-Yugoslav countries spared being Slovenia in the north. During the Yugoslav period, politicians such as Josip Broz Tito attempted to dismantle the ethnic divisions among the Yugoslav constituents and promote a single unified Yugoslav identity, as he himself was born to a Croat father and Slovenian mother. Although partially successful, the divisions resumed after the dissolution and even amplified in some cases, as the new republics are more divided than ever, despite having much in common. There were previously large Serb minorities in Croatia and vice versa, although in the past couple of decades after the dissolution of Yugoslavia, there has been an unofficial population exchange between the two countries, with the majority of these communities moving back to their home nations, despite many times living in the area for generations. The Balkan Slavs are separated from the rest of the Slavic peoples across the Black Sea, although the region of Dobruja in modern Romania was formerly inhabited by Slavic Bulgarians, although in the 20th century virtually the entire ethnic Bulgarian population was expelled in a population exchange with Romania, hence severing the connection between the greater Slavic region. In addition to being linguistically connected, nearly all South Slavs belong to the I2 haplogroup, which is also dominant in nearby Romanians, which does show that despite speaking different languages, Romanians are most closely related genetically to Slavs than to Italians or other Romance peoples. I mistakenly stated in my video on Albanians that most Albanians belong to the I2 haplogroup, but it was my mistake for using an outdated source, as even though studies greatly vary, it is generally accepted that E. 3B, not I2, is dominant among ethnic Albanians, which is the same as the neighboring Greeks. 
There are approximately 30 million members of the South Slavic peoples today, divided between these many countries, as well as a growing diaspora not only in the United States, but especially neighboring Germany, Switzerland, and Austria, where an estimated 6% of people have origins in the former Yugoslavia, mostly due to their wealth, proximity, and relative stability. However, there are also far older communities of Croats and Serbs in other parts of the world, including a colony of Croatians on the island of Tierra del Fuego, just a stone's throw away from Antarctica, a topic we discussed a few months ago. All these nations, religions, cultures, and countries add up to a pretty fascinating landscape, even if it is one of the more politically volatile regions on Earth. So please go ahead and let me know your thoughts on the Croats, Serbs, Bulgarians, Macedonians, Slovenians, Bosniaks, and even the Montenegrins. And as for Kosovo, well, we don't talk about Kosovo. For today's poll, go ahead and let me know which region or organization the future of the Balkan Slavs is intertwined with. And as always, this has been Mason. Thanks for watching, everyone. Vidya tute, sledeci put.